Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, Indie Comics Jones. Today is July 29th, 2022, and this is episode 527. Today we're looking at There's Something Wrong with Patrick Todd. This is a number one coming out from Aftershock, and as you can see, his mind is being blown. Uh, this doesn't happen in the book, so to speak. Uh, but the glowing eyes, they do. And that has something to do with what's wrong with him, I, I, uh, I believe. Let's take a quick look to see who worked on this fine book. This is a recommend, by the way. Okay. Number the name of this issue, or yes, the issue is Whatever You Say, Kid. Ed Brisson is the writer. He's been in mainstream for a long time. Gavin Guidry is the artist. Chris O. Halloran, or Halloran, I'm sorry, is the colorist, and Hassan Atsmeni El Hua is the letterer. We've seen his name quite a few times. And here's how we start off with this book. <laughs> the art in it's pretty good. Um, I don't have any any problems with it. It's very distinctive. It's very uh, well drawn. Um, you get that dark eye outline that does kind of look like a coloring book type thing, but I, I get this is a big, sh big shot here, and it does bring that more into the foreground. So nice job on that. Uh, what we have here is a bank robber, but he's been hypnotized. He's not really a bank robber. However, I believe he's committed many other crimes. I believe uh, something to do with uh, children, in fact. So he is holding up a bank. Tells the teller just put the bag, put the money in two separate bags, and walks out to the the car. He's holding the bag separately, and one of the die packs goes off. And this is after he asks the teller not to put a die pack in there. Now this is all taking place in Nova Scotia. And this one's at Halifax, and that's where Ed Brisson is from. So I think he's just keeping it local for his own sake. And this is June 2010. So he drops the one bag that's got the die on it and he carries the clean one off. And he's kind of in this hypnotized state. And then we come to uh, Patrick, is that his name? Patrick Todd, who's kind of waiting by a dumpster for him to drive up. He drives up, gives him the money, and he tells him to go turn himself in. Uh, and confess to all these other crimes. And this is where we find out that perhaps he has been a child molester or something like that. So he goes off and drives off. And you can see, I don't know if you can really see it here, but once again, his eyes go white. And when he does that, it, he's trying to hypnotize somebody, um, typically. So then we're introduced to Brad Anderson, who's a detective in the local police department. And he's the guy that's been kind of following up on these strange cases of these people turning themselves in after committing bank robberies. Meanwhile, we cut back to Patrick Todd. He's going to see his mother, who's at this care facility. Apparently, she's got some weird disease or, or some kind of mental issue. And he pays with the stolen money. He pays cash to the receptionist. She doesn't want to take it. She's saying you got to set up an account online. He says, I, I don't have it. I can't do that. And he's able to flash his pearly whites at her, and she takes the cash this one time, I guess. Then we shows him going into the facility. He's going to go visit his mother, Lisa Ann Todd, and she's just kind of not there. Um, he even tries his hypnotizing her, and she still doesn't speak up. So Patrick Todd's by himself, basically. His father's not around. His mother's in a mental loss um, institute. And I don't know what he's been doing, if he's going to school or what. We don't know that much about it yet. So there's a lot of mysteries to uncover. What is his secret power that he has? And why does it work on some people and, uh, and not on others? It didn't work on his mother, apparently. So back at the police station, they're, they're uh, interviewing this guy that has turned himself in for all these horrible uh, crimes and also the um, the bank robbery. He's confessed to these horrible crimes. And the police shows him this this line of characters. He says, do you know any of these people? He says, no. He goes, well, they did exactly what you did 
they robbed a bank, they don't really remember hardly anything about it or, or what, where the money went, and yet um, they, they also con confessed to all these other crimes. So he says, I don't know, I don't know, and the, the um, detective Brad Anderson is pressing him pretty hard here and suddenly I guess he has like a brain embolus embolison or something. Embolson? I don't know. I'm trying to say here. And his nose starts bleeding and he falls over dead. So they take him to the hospital, but he is pretty much gone. In the meantime, um, we have uh, Patrick Todd at, at where he's living now. He's talking to the clerk, telling him that I got, uh, um, I can pay for the, um, for the room for I'm gonna have to be staying here longer he's got the cash and the guy's kind of suspect of it all he thinks he's a runaway and Patrick Todd uses his powers on him he says oh okay I'll take the cash and I'll be okay and we flip back to the QE2 hospital where uh, the detective Brad Anderson gets the news that the person he was interrogating has passed on and then we have Patrick Todd back in his room doing web searches and whatnot. He gets a knock at the door, and it turns out to be these two thugs breaking their way in, going, where's the money? So somehow they know about the, the money that has been stolen from the banks. He tries his powers on it, but it doesn't seem to work. They attack him anyway and knock him out. And then we cut to another home. This is just a single-family home, not the apartment that... Patrick Todd is living in, and we start seeing, as we go inside, there's a dead body there. There's this guy with kind of a machete, I, I think it's a machete. Um, and he's at this board with all the yarn things, so these people are trying to put something together. I guess there's some kind of special group or government extension, I'm not sure what it is. But this guy's a little, he's really wacko. He finds the picture of Patrick Todd on the board, and he says this is his next victim. And we see him walk out. He's got this strange thing on his head, like he himself is a metal patient, actually getting radio signals or something. And he's got his, I guess it's a machete, and also a bag full of heads. He has gone ahead and killed some more people in this room. It looks like there's three of them behind him, so... And there was a fourth by that couch in there. And this is to be continued. This is where it ended. So we got kind of a mystery within a mystery. Um, it's well written. It's very easy to understand, which I love. Um, some, of the, some of the ones I've been reading li uh, lately have been uh, very difficult to follow at times. And uh, and this one was very straightforward. I, I, I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm hope hoping issue two will continue with that. And with that, here is the next issue. This is what the cover looks like. Or something is wrong with Patrick Todd. Okay, then we get these extra pages. The story itself is only 20 pages, but we do get these extra pages here, and we see a couple of the other people that turn themselves into uh, Detective Anderson here, and this is their write-ups of the robberies that they have committed. And then we have a quick file folder dossier, if you will, of Lisa and Todd, who's been put into this mental hospital, and it talks about the tests that they have run on her, and they can't figure out what's wrong with her. They thought she had Alzheimer's disease, but apparently she does, and she's got something else going on. And it might be connected to Patrick Todd, because there's something wrong with Patrick Todd. All right, moving on. A calculated man. Genius accountant Jack Beans knows where all the bodies are buried, can... He thwart the mob without getting himself subtracted. There you go. From writer Paul Tobin. Who also wrote Benny Mask and My Date with Monsters. Okay. And Where Starships Go to Die. I know this one is out now. This is issue two, I believe. Um, I, I don't know too much about it. I did flip through it. It, it didn't catch my interest so I moved on. Astronaut Down, I I think I, this is actually a trade. Um, in Dogs of London, I believe this is a trade as well. Don't know much about either one of these.
Tremors. So this is what else is coming out from Aftershock. We'll just kind of go through these quick. I really can't see that well. This book actually came out uh, two or three weeks ago. I'm finally finishing up that batch. I picked up four more comics today from the last two weeks. One's a number one. The other three are continuation of series that I started. So we'll get into those in the next few days. And there you have it. So this last page is half. And then we have There's Something Wrong with Patrick Todd. And you get the little write-up about Ed Brisson here. I get that flat. Zoom in. If you want to pause this on your PC, you'll be able to read it if you like. Okay. There's Gavin Gidry if you like the art in there. And I'll give Chris and Hussan a little love as well. All right. Read Dangerously. And there you have it. It is a recommend. There's something wrong with Patrick Todd, but it is recommended still anyway. Okay, so thanks for stopping by and watching this video review of a comic book called There's Something Wrong with Patrick Todd. As always, please like, please subscribe if you haven't, and please leave comments. I'd love to see you, and we'll see you next time at the Temple of Tomes. This is Indie Comics Jones bidding you adieu.